I was first saved when I was about two or three years old. Uh, my earliest memories are of Jesus. Um, his word was present in my home. He was present in my home. You know, angelic visitation was present in my home. My grandmother, um, who was the matriarch of our family, um, had really walked very, very, very closely with God during her life. And as very small children, she babysat my cousins and I. So, and we were all, you know, just a few months apart, um, a year to six months apart. And uh, she babysat the three of us and really made it her her life's mission to ensure that the Christ that she knew was imparted to us. And I can tell you my grandmother knew him more intimately than anybody um, that, I've, that I have walked with in my life. It was such a great picture of, you know, what a godly woman looks like and how she behaves and what her, her, you know, private life looks like. Um, but I remember a storm coming when I was about two years old and grandmother was always very um, adamant about, you know, just um, honoring the presence of God however it came, whether it came, you know, in, during worship and song or prayer and Bible reading. Um, she was always adamant that we honor the presence of the Lord. And I remember this one day she said, to us a storm came and us little kids we were just tiny babies and I think uh, you know we had been running around and um, suddenly the storm rolled in and we were frightened and she said it's okay but just be still God is moving and I remember her taking this moment to begin to impart the Word of God to us that there was nothing to fear and that God would protect us from the storm and um, that we could find peace with him even in the midst of this. And that's when she asked us if we wanted to give our lives to Jesus. And I remember before she could even get it out, I just remember us all like confessing every sin. <laughs> like I took his crayon or I ate her cookie. and But we were just so, you know, just babes which is what God wants us to be in our hearts concerning him and his word and the things of God. But at, in that moment, we were just confessing every sin that we had done, things that we knew um, were not pleasing to God. And my grandmother led us in the prayer of salvation that day. And it wasn't just that day because it was an ongoing nurturing from the time we were that little all the way up through um, young adulthood and until I left home. But there were moments beyond the time when I was about two or three that I gave my life to Christ again and again, just renew the commitment again and again because he's so good. You're in church and he's moving and the atmosphere is shifted and the presence of God is there and you want him to know I give my life to you yet again. It was that type of thing. My grandmother was a missionary and, I mean, a powerful, bold woman of God. And all of that that she walked in, uh, she covered us with it, um, all of her children. And she covered her grandchildren with it and she really imparted those things to us. I remember thinking as a small girl, I wanted to be a nun. There were three things I wanted to be. One was a professional bodybuilder. I still can't explain that. <laughs> but I was very young, so young. It was like the time when, you know, you as a little girl could take off your shirt. I would take off my shirt and flex my muscle. <laughs> and um, I don't know, maybe that had some spiritual, you know, ramifications to it as well. But I do remember feeling like I wanted to be a nun. And we weren't Catholic. We were, you know, Pentecostals and non-denominational. My grandmother grew up Baptist, but you know, we were we were not <laughs> Catholic. So this concept of being a nun, I don't even know where it came from. But as an adult, all I knew 
how to interpret that has was that I wanted to live a life devoted to Christ and that I was called to be a bride, you know, um, and, and really live a life that was consecrated and set apart. And uh, I've walked through many, many journeys within this life's journey, many roads and, you know, many places God has taken me to. But the one constant in all of those was Jesus Christ himself, his word, his presence, and going deeper into that, not just getting to one place and plateauing and stopping, but really just pressing into him, continual pressing into him, a renewing of the commitment to him, not out of, you know, some shortcoming, but out of a love relationship with him. Um, and I can say that that depth of intimacy that he bought me and I walked through three years of consecration. It was just me and Jesus where we walked through three years of consecration together. It was the greatest love, the deepest love and the greatest joy, the deepest peace. Now around me, my life circumstance was hell was breaking loose. But I didn't feel any of it. Didn't sense any of it. Um, I knew it was happening. But Jesus was my fortress. He was my refuge. He was my citadel. And I literally was hiding under the shadow of his wing. Finding safety in him. In that place. Of the presence of God. And there was nothing like it. But I just wanted to encourage all of you that you know those of you that have small children or grandchildren don't neglect your prayers over them because the things that you speak over them when they're very small when they're just seeds have don't even exist yet when they're babies infants and in the womb those words have power there's no time and there's no space in the spirit so those words have power to impact to change, to move, to shift destinies, um, to establish the purpose and plans of God for the lives of your children and your grandchildren. So I want to encourage you, don't neglect that because I sit here as a product of prayer, as a product of covering, as a product that prayer keeps. The prayers of the righteous will sustain another generation, will keep another generation, will preserve another generation, and will propel another generation into destiny and purpose in God, in Christ Jesus.